This tutorial will show you all the different options you have for importing a site into the cloudaccess.net network. In the past, our clients could manually upload a site using file transfer protocol or request some help from our support team. These options are still available, but we've added an import site feature within the cloud control panel to simplify the process. Access this feature by clicking on the import site button in the side menu of the CCP. The first step in the process is to select which type of application you'd like to import. Traditionally, we've been a Joomla and WordPress hosting company, but we can host any type of LAMP-based application. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll import a Joomla site, but if you have any questions about whether or not our platform can support your application, please feel free to submit a support ticket or give us a call. In this area, we'll select Joomla and then click on the Next button to proceed. The next part of this tutorial will illustrate the different options you have for importing your site files and your database file into our network. After selecting which type of application you'd like to import, you'll have to select an import method, and you can upload files from your computer or paste in links to the files on the internet, or select Managed Migration where you'll be directed to this page where you'll open a support ticket. Answer all questions here completely and provide as many details as you can about the application that you'd like to import. After you submit the ticket, if our team has any questions at all, we'll get back with you. To upload website files and a database file directly from your computer, select File Upload as your import method. Next, select Archive as your file type and under the Archive File Upload area, upload your site file archive and your SQL file by clicking on the Choose File button for each option. Please make note of these acceptable file types which include zip files, tar files, tar.gz files, and tar.bz2 files. We can also only accept SQL files from your database. Click on the Next button when you're ready to proceed. To upload a JPA file directly from your computer, select File Upload as your import method. Next, select a Kiba Backup as your file type, and under the JPA File Upload section, upload your JPA file by clicking on the Choose File button. Please know that JPA files are produced by using Akiba Backup, a popular third-party backup engine for all types of applications. You can download Akiba Backup at akibabackup.com. After uploading the JPA file, click on the Next button to proceed. To upload separate website files and a database SQL file from the Internet, select Direct Transfer as your import method. Next, select Archive as your file type, and under the Direct Archive Import via URL area, paste in the separate Site Files link and the SQL file link. Please make note of these acceptable file types which include zip files, tar files, tar.gz files, and tar.bz2 files, and we can only accept SQL files for your database. After pasting in the links, you'll notice the green message which indicates you've pasted in a link to an acceptable file type. After receiving that message, click on the Next button to proceed with the import. To upload a JPA file from the Internet, select Direct Transfer as your import method. Next, select Akiba Backup as your file type. Remember that JPA files are produced using Akiba Backup, a popular third-party backup engine for all types of applications, and you can get a copy of Akiba Backup by visiting akibabackup.com. Under the Direct JPA Import via URL option, paste in the downloadable link to the JPA file. After pasting in the link, you'll receive the green message below which indicates you've pasted in a link to an acceptable file type. You can also ensure that you're providing us a downloadable link by searching for the link in your web browser, which should start your computer's download process. Once you're sure it's a downloadable link, you can click on the Next button to proceed with the import. Regardless of your import method, you'll finish up by choosing an extraction location. If you'd like to launch a new product on our platform, select Create New Site, and please know an invoice will be generated for the product and it must be paid before the site is accessible. 
you'll be required to create a new subdomain for the site you're importing, and you can always purchase a new domain name or point an existing domain name to the site once it's imported. When you're ready, click on the Import button to proceed. The other option you have for an extraction location is to overwrite an existing site, a product that you already have hosted on our platform. Please note that all existing content of the site you're overwriting will be permanently erased, and this includes any snapshots you've taken with the App Snapshot feature of the CCP. Use the drop-down menu below to select the site that you'd like to overwrite. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to create a new site, and we'll click on the Import button to proceed with the import. You'll receive this message asking if you're ready to start the import process, and if you are, select OK. You'll receive a series of messages letting you know that the site is being prepared and the import is being initialized. The larger the site is, the longer the import will take, and please don't navigate away from these pages or you risk disrupting the import process. Once it's complete, you'll receive a blue message letting you know that the import is pending, and remember, it will be pending until you pay your invoice. The blue message does indicate that the application has been imported into our platform, and if you return to the CCP homepage, you'll receive this message letting you know that the import has been successful. To pay any outstanding invoices, click on the View Invoices button at the top of the CCP. We hope this tutorial has been helpful, and as always, thank you for choosing CloudAccess.net.